My name is Vaichi Tells Party Elite Mastermind. I feel weird saying that they are, they already know each other. That's weird. Right? <laughs> That's okay. Let's, Let's keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dive into it, man. Let's dive. Everybody Let's knows straight in. who cares what my name is. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, introduce yourself for everybody because they may not know you. Pretty much. I mean, my cat doesn't even know my name. Whew. My name is Eric Oliva. I am out here in New York, Staten Island, basically focusing a hell of a lot of years, 30 plus years on meditation and personal development since I was little bitty kid of eight years old, um, put a lot of focus now into this area and trying to bring this type of information to better people's lives. So here's my question. I know you start, well, walk us through the whole journey of Thinking Go Rich. When did you start it? How did you start it? And this new journey with, with Thinking Go Rich, because you're diving into it with a different sets of glasses. So tell us what's going on with that. Well, one, yes, a very new set of glasses right there. <laughs> <laughs> I got a new set of glasses, and I see the world totally differently. Um, when I was, uh, I got to put this into context for 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 myself as well as you and, and everyone else. When I was um, eight years old, learning self introspection uh, through practicing getting into meditation, what that means and what that meant was finding what is the thing that screws your head up. What is the thing that causes you to go this way and that way, and how to gain control of that. So you can put yourself in a better direction, basically make the life you want. We didn't have these terms like these coined and, you know, really cool umbrella terms like, uh, well, we didn't have, I didn't have Think and Grow Rich, right? I didn't have any of these new age and new things. Oh, man, I'm just losing my vocabulary, like with what we have with uh, uh, many of the big life coaches and business coaches that we have out there on the market. I can see the names yeah, because they're, you know, they're not here. Language, NLP, D D R T A. I mean, we got so many. Didn't acronyms. have that. I'm, I'm, I'm yes. running out of memorization. Right. right. And we didn't have that. Well, at least I didn't have that vocabulary at eight years old in 1988. Um, but as I was going into my teens, the practice of focusing your attention on a specific thing and making sure that that thing has every part of your desire, of your ability to, oh my goodness, I, I want to really go on a whole entire whirlwind here with all the information. It's just like trying to count off my head. As long as you put 100%, or at least what you think is 100%, without doubting yourself, you will accomplish. And I'm going to give my version of that in two sentences. I was 14. I decided I'm going to set a 10-year plan. First sentence. Second sentence. By the time I was 24, I already accomplished everything I wrote in my 10-year plan. Bingo. Two sentences. I did that simply because, here's the context, learning how to cultivate my mind, focus on what it is I really, truly want to accomplish, and doing that despite everybody telling me I'm crazy, I'm too young, I don't know what the world is, I don't know my ass from my elbow, and I might as well jump off a roof and shoot myself at the same time. Like, <laughs> this is the advice people had given me from 1988 to 1999. And one of them was my mentor at 1999 for martial arts. I was like, hey, here's a gun, go shoot yourself, you're never going to accomplish. He said, but I did. <laughs> I have been. What do you mean? So when I start reading Think and Grow Rich, I'm sitting there going, very, oh, my God. Point. That's a big point that you just mentioned because in your – in your bubble, you were accomplishing that. It's just that your bubble may not be the bubble that they like. It's totally fine. Exactly. You know? Maybe this maybe your accomplishment is making eighty thousand dollars a year, and then maybe your father is making two eighty. So there's a two hundred thousand dollars difference, but that's okay because you are who you are at eighty thousand. He is who he is at two eighty, and you can ex you can. You can take them based on who they are and accept them the way they are. Whether no. they're the, the holiest person, whether they're an angel, right. whether they're an asshole, doesn't matter. Whether they're rich, <laughs> or whether they're, that's what you... So to me, it's like that's a big key element that a lot of people don't understand. You could be living in a household where everybody is making 80000 but you're not comfortable making eighty. You want to go make you know 150000 so you're going to be not the norm in that bubble, which is right. totally cool. Now get this. My parents, my father was totally supportive of whichever direction I, of what I decided. He asked me at 11 years old, what do you want to do with your life? At 11 years old, I turned around and I said, well, the, the tech industry is going to be too advanced by the time I get to an, a, a stage to actually work in it or understand it and actually work in it. Um, general, other, other general industries are already at their peak. 
at 11 years old, I'm going off of intuition, what I feel, what I observe, right? And there's not much, but I get this picture. I said, I'm going to teach people how to develop their own mind and, you know, live a life according to how they want to develop themselves. I mean, meditation, cultivation practices, personal development. He looks at me and goes, you need a lot of money, kid. <laughs> I said, okay, we'll work on it. And it um, doesn't mean that I went and made millions. My focus for the first 20 years of my life was developing my mind. Like, who am I or how do I want to present myself as? How do I want to do things as? Who do I want to be as? And I had to develop that, and it took a long time. <laughs> I, I destroyed myself many times over to get to a point where I can say, okay, I'm at a place now here at 40 that I know exactly how I want to be shaped. No one's going to move that, that vision. I, am, I have a definitive focus. I've so made tell me what you a definitive your, focus. So tell me what you did with your son now. So now, fast forward, we got the book Thinking Grow Rich. Walk me through that. All right. So what I did was I started reading this book, and I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, if I had this language, I could have realized this book then. <laughs> it's just total different language use of these things, like definitive and, you know, having a conviction. You know, I call it conviction. You know, like, this is what I'm definitely going to do, and that's it. No matter who tells me what, that's it. And just in the first chapter, I mean, it, it just blew my mind right away. Like, you know, you have the, the, a guy in the story, a Barnes, okay? He, he, he had a desire. Um, one of his chief characteristics was uh, that he was definite, like a definitive thing. You know, like, you know he had this, I got to do this, and that's it. You know, and that was just on page one. So right there, if people can look at, oh, wait a second. Page one just says uh, he had a definitive character. Like, this is what he wanted. Oh, my goodness. Maybe if I just apply that, how far can I go? You don't know how far people can go with just a strong conviction. This is when, and I'm going to go right this into Buddhist Sutra, when he says, if you guys realize in the first sentence what I said before I had this five-hour dialogue, we wouldn't have sat for five hours, but I had to sit for five hours because you didn't get it. <laughs> like the first three sentences, you could have gotten it, but nope. So I got to go through a whole bunch of different ways. Same thing with this book. I'm looking at this first page and so I'm saying, oh, my goodness. Be Eric, you don't even will. have to go through the. You don't even have to go through the. Okay, so backstory. You may not know this, but most of. Um, first of all, I don't even think you need to go through the title. I think you need to go to the first vocabulary that is used in the title, and it says "think." <laughs> that's just right there. So you know, you have to go through all of it because you didn't get it right. So that's the first part, right? Think. The second thing is most think and grow rich books do not have the first couple of pages printed for whatever reason you know there's no conspiracy somebody messed up some some versions have it some versions don't have it but literally in the book thinking grow rich napoleon hill talks about it. 1925 law of success there's only one time a mention of a mastermind group 1928 law of success he dedicated the entire first chapter over a couple of hundred pages just on the mastermind um, process then we fast forward to 1937 when he published the thinking grow rich mastermind group is part of it but in the first couple of pages he will tell you some books have it and literally is there it says listen go find yourself a mastermind group be part of it don't waste your time with the rest of the book that's it. You, you should have just got it. But the key element is I understand that sometimes, because we're not all the same, we all think, act, you know, we, we have a lot of similarities, but the way we process it and the way we convey it might be different than other people. So he had to write the whole book and give explanation why the first part that he said does work. So that's that to me is profound. But imagine that the feeling that you got the first chapter, imagine you will have that at every single chapter, and it's accumulation of all the success principles that makes you successful, not just one of them. Now, one key element is that you decide what you want, and you're willing to stake your neck out for it. The way I understood it is this, Eric. If you teach your son or daughter, I believe he's a son, right? Son. Mm -hmm. So if you teach your son, that we're going to go 
dig a hole 10 feet deep. You know, a lot of people that are part of that privilege group have never digged a hole. I have actually. I've worked with my uncle when he was building his backyard and everything else. And I know digging a one, two, three, four, fit. Like I know how much of a pain it is to dig, dig that deep. But let's just say you dig it 10 feet deep. That means a standard apartment wall is about seven to nine feet, right? So let's say so. So as, as far as the wall of your house, that's how deep you go in there. Then you put this big, huge iron rod pole in the hole, and then you build up 10 feet of just concrete. And then that's your goal. Well, then you and I understand if anybody has any basic concept of construction, it will take a lot of force to pull this rod out or break it, bend it, or pull it out of its roots. Because you went 10 feet deep and you pour concrete around it. If everybody did that with their goals, we will have a different planet. But literally is that. You find whatever you want, you're willing to stake everything on that. That's it. Simple as that. Now the plan that you go about doing that, maybe you're gonna you see, you're gonna say, you know, if let's say you and I were gonna dig up the, the hole and put our you know goals in there, you're like, listen, we don't want to do too much of labor. Let's get you know, let's get the machinery right, let's let's get some equipment, let's go to Home Depot, get the right equipment. So the plan in which you implement that might be different. I might just say, you know what? No, we're gonna use an, an, and we're gonna use a shovel, we're gonna go all out, man. It might take us five days to dig it, but that's what we're using. No machinery. So the plan that you implement, that business goal that you have, might be different. You know, you could do it 10 different ways. But if you embed that concept into the new new generation where they stick their entire life on that and they're not going to deviate, one of my best uh, motivational speaker, which I don't agree with everything he says, but Dan Pena, if you look him up, it's a crazy dude. He cusses everybody out. I mean, he is a ruthless uh, coach. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think he's probably beating up some of his mentees and his students in a session um, because he talks about it, right? And I believe it. I know he probably took a whack and just beat the <laughs> shit out of somebody <laughs> coaching, saying you're not doing it right. But he says that. He says he, uh, he was so scared of his dad when he told him to stand over here and wait for me that sure of a less of a tsunami, he wasn't going to move. That's what it takes. You standing by your goals and dreams and, and what you want, short of a tsunami that's going to take to move you. Right. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense because you, 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 um, you brought up twice what I would say to my son or how I'm bringing this up to my son. And from a very young age, we, I mean, I'm talking about, I mean, the moment he got out of the belly, like we just converse with them. But the idea is that I put in this, give me a reason. Give me your whole entire works of how you want things to be done. Okay? Uh, you want to accomplish something. You want to get something. You want us to buy something from you. Give us a why. Give us a reason. Give us the whole entire concept of how this thing is going to make you feel like you will be better. And if you can actually do that, hey, we might have something here. But articulate. And this is what I said to a one-year-old. And I said to when he was two and three. <laughs> and lo and behold, we go to stores and he's like, oh, can we get this Lego? Why? Ten minutes in the aisle because this. Look at the design. Look at the colors. And he goes in and he goes, no, this is something I really want. Like, I really can work with this. Okay, it's like 300 pieces. No problem. Go for it. And he'll go to town on it. But the thing is that he puts his mind to making that happen. He has to now prove. He has to become accountable. He put his whole entire focus here. Now he has it in his hands. What is he going to do with it? He doesn't want to let himself down. He doesn't want to let anyone else down. So he has to start manipulating it, building, make something form. He makes something form. God forbid you take a piece off of it. My creation, what did you do? Why? Because he spent so much time and now he learned the value of time. Oh, it took me three days. It took me a week. It took me uh, two weeks to put together a 4,000 piece house, Lego house, right? Don't knock it down. Don't put it away in a box. Leave it up. Put it somewhere. Don't take it down. I, so, I worked so hard on that. We all did. He, he now values his effort from now. That was from when he was a kid, a little kid. Now he's only seven. But still, 
he's determined. He has a definitive goal, a definitive purpose now. If he puts his mind on something, he's not going to say, well, I'm going to do it, and five minutes later, I don't want it. He has to learn the thing he puts his mind to. He has to try something and actually make it useful to him so it sticks in his memory, and he has a quality of it. Now he has quality. He has accomplishment. He has his own vision of himself. He now has a straighter path in terms of how to accomplish his goals than most would. Exactly. So tell us now. So now you guys are reading the the, the book Thinking Grows. How many chapters have you got, and what have you got so far? So you're reading it with him at the same time. Yes, reading it with him at the same time. We've got into chapter three. Uh, we read. I have him read uh, a few of the pages too as we go along, and you know he's learning himself some really big ass words. Um, but he's taking out. He's taking out parts. So they go in through a comprehension with him. What do you mean? What does this mean? What do you get from this? What, what is the general idea here? Um, we can go into like life and death conversations and what happens when you die, what happens before and after and all this fun stuff, but it's around 9.30 at night, so we go into general conversation with the book. Um, just saying we can get in depth here. And I say, what is your takeaway from, let's do the three feet from gold story. And generally, he's like, well, you don't stop, you keep going. I said, right, that's fine, yes. Now let's go a little deeper. So the context of going deeper is that well, we don't know when there is going to be no more. You don't know that. So it's not just about putting more effort to do it. It's about how focused, how strong, how much do you really, really make this goal your life? So he says, it's like, if you don't have it, you die. <laughs> it's, like, it's like breathing air. I said, exactly okay, good. We can go to sleep. <laughs> it's time to go to bed now. <laughs> you know, like if you want something, and there was this, uh, I forgot who it was it, who did a video, Prince Ea, EA, Prince EA. He put a video many years ago. You gotta have, you gotta want something as though um, you need it like breath or some, something to that degree. Yes, when I did my 10 year plan and I'm reading this three feet from gold story, um, it brought memories of when I was 14 writing, when I'm 20, I will have this. When I'm 19, I would have worked for a publisher or worked for a magazine for editing because I really loved editing and writing. <laughs> okay? Um, I will have gone to China by 24. I would have been married the first time at 24. I, I did all that. I wrote it down, read it every day for about a week, and put it aside. And, I'm, and, and I never let go of that. I was ridiculed all into my 20s for having certain goals and never letting up. You're going to be poor the rest of your life. You're this, you're that. You got to get a better job. You got to do that. You're not going to have enough money. But I was making enough money. I was working four jobs at one point. I loved it, but it was tiring. But I did it. Um, the thing was, I accomplished my goal, and I didn't give up. When I, when I saw that it was a struggle, I sat there, and I took a step back, but I sat there, and I went into contemplation, and I said, I have no money for my rent. It's due in two weeks. I have about $10 to my name. I applied for a job and they're not calling me. What the hell is going on here? And I think I was 22, 21. And when I'm looking at the story, I'm saying, here they are, three feet from gold. They have no clue what the hell they're doing. At this point, they're like, well, there's nothing here. We're going to waste our time. We're going to waste our money. Let's just try to make something back and, and sell the machinery and just go on with our lives, right? We'll pay everyone back later on. You know, and they did. But the thing was, I was at this precipice where I was at this point where I could have stopped and just said, all right, I'm done. I'm not going to go and pursue the goals I put. I'm not going to go and pursue what I know I have a great passion for, what I wake up for every morning. I'm just going to go down to the local store and just take a stock boy job. There's nothing wrong with a stock boy job, but that just wasn't where I was at. My head was, how do I make that stock boy become like... Superman for his own life, you know, like that's where I was. I was ready to jump off the cliff and go flying, but I couldn't, I, I just couldn't get that next step. I didn't know where. So I stayed there in contemplation. I said, no, I'm going to get that job. And it's not that, okay, I'm going to get that job. And then someone just calls me and gives me a job. Magical. Ooh, no, it's that I was so sh sure, so certain that I got this interview that when I go meet that person a second time, they're going to give me this job. Like there's like, they wanted me here from the get go. I just knew what I was capable of, and I didn't want to give up on myself on that. So I had to. Either that or I stabbed myself in the back, and then everyone who said I'm worthless is right because I told them, no, this has nothing to do with this type of worth. It has to do with my type of worth, not your type of worth, right? So I could have stepped back, 
and never be, we wouldn't have this conversation. We wouldn't be here talking. I know that. Um, There's so many I, people I, I wouldn't I have talked to. Listen, if people take the, the definiteness of what they want to do and they write it down, yes. and, which is crazy part because to me, this is very fundamental and we should be teaching this stuff in, in high school. In school. So, in school. I, I teach my, my kids, I teach for Mandarin. Uh, over the semester, I tell them, sometimes we have classes of, what is your vision? What do you want to do in the next six months? Not just in school. Like, what do you have for yourself? What are your things you do after school that you, you know, put your time in video games? You want to be a gamer? Great. How do you develop that? So you got 10 years experience by the time you graduate high school. Like, let's go further. Let's build up a portfolio for you. You love art? Great. Let's get your artwork together. Like, I want that for kids. I took some, I took some points here from, from, from this story because I'm sitting there going, I told my son, three feet from gold. We read this story, and I think it, it, it has to be one of the most impactful stories Right off the bat. I mean, if I said to someone, if you put your mind to something, uh, you know, all this airy-fairy, hippy-dippy talk, you know, they're going to go, wow, that's so great, and it probably works and makes it feel good for three days. thing is that I actually did the, hey, every morning, this is what I'm going to accomplish. Every morning, Eric, you're going to accomplish A, B, C, and D. I want everyone who meets me to think and feel as though they already have awoken to this greater wisdom in themselves. How do I do that? I have to be that example. How do I be that example? Obstacles come. I overcome the adversity. They realize their strength in this type of doing. They follow. They follow them. They just take the method and apply. That's what I mean by follow. Like in, in, in the take, one of the takeaways in Three Feet of Gold is that like one of the most common causes of failure is the habit, and I'm quoting, of quitting when one is overtaken by temporary defeat. Just right there, they get a slap in the face, they're running, they trip, they sprain their ankle, oh, I can't do this anymore. Yes, you can. Or, oh, I ran out of money, what am I going to do? i got to go borrow money now, I'm not going to go ahead and uh, you know, pursue my goals, I'm not going to pursue this thing. People think that fulfilling a dream is some magical experience, and they've been beaten up with that idea that they cannot actually do something good for themselves because it's some uh, not reality. But the thing is, the, the very thing a person thinks is reality is exactly that reality for them. Just like you said earlier in our conversation. This is how it works for them, and they're cool with it for them. But not for us. Not for those who are like, no, I need another 5%. <laughs> I need another 30% of this. I can't, I can't just put in my big toe in the water and hopefully think that I've gone swimming. i got to jump in. Both feet. You drown trying <laughs> or you live your life thinking, I might know how to swim, but I just don't know. And you have it. I know what that feels like because I did that for smaller things. I would never take for granted my vision of what I want for my life. I knew that was like this big X skull and bones thing on me. No, no, no. You don't do that. That's poison. I trained myself to think that way when I was a child. But whatever I truly want to invest in, my emotion, my mind, my thinking, my action every single day, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to take 10% of that and put it over there and just go, well, that's not working out. No, I'm going to get five ideas. Five ideas get all percent of my time. All of them. How do they all work with each other? If they don't, goodbye, toss it, toss it, toss it. I'll see you in 10 more years. Maybe I'll come back to that idea. You know? I, I, agree. I agree with that 100% because that's what it takes to... I mean, listen, we want... I mean, thinking grow rich, Napoleon Hill went around for however long, 10 years, 20 years, whatever the case might be. He interviewed 10, 20, 30, 50. But the fact of the matter is that he did take, he did go around. He did spend the time. He did write about it. You don't just publish a book just by writing it one draft. You have to actually sit there, yes. write it with a typewriter, do all of these different things, think about it. So even if you take it at the least amount of time that it takes for somebody to go do that, he did it so he could leave this planet better than he found it. Even if, even if that means to be just a collective of some principles that might help other people. So there you to go. me, it's like you got to be thinking about what I'm doing. Is it going to help this planet? Am I leaving this planet in a better circumstances when I'm no longer here? Or am I going to be part of this group of people that are just born, have a life, some good life, and then they just perish and they go? That's so, so true. You don't, so true. Them, you don't, That's you don't, so good. don't look at them as someone who's made a difference for um, for other human beings. 
That's where that's where the leadership comes in. That's where you have goals because hopefully your goals and your aspiration and you the way you do it will inspire other individuals to go after what they want also too. And that has a ripple effect. If you think positively, they're going to think that, you know, if you yeah. stick to what you want to get without violating anybody's right, you know, Napoleon Hill said that, right? So that's 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 the way I look at it. I so get let's you. Do this. Uh, uh. We'll finish, finish up that thought. I was going to say, We'll, we'll do another live session once you get through like the fifth and sixth chapters and then we'll do a recap <laughs> and then we'll go from there just, and yeah. some bullet points of that. There, there, there's so much. Just in the title, as you said before, just to think and grow rich. Thinking is everything. It, I did this um, when I was 21. I got a job in a Chinese medical school teaching uh, Qigong, Qigong, uh, breath work. But I got the job because I had to prove that energy between – Everybody and everything actually exists. And I'm going to take the, the soapbox here for a second. I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to beat my chest a little bit, you know, in pride because I took a concept that people were, oh, it's placebo, it's BS. And I made them find it tangible. Um, there were things on the floor. I had a whole room full of bioscientists, biomedical students and, and, and doctors. And um, there were some rocks on the floor. And I looked at the rock. I looked at the table. I did this three times. And then I picked up the rock and put it on the table. I said, okay, I, I proved the, fifth, the theory of yin and yang. I proved the theory of these two forces of existence. Case closed. And they said, we don't understand. And I threw my hands up and I said, okay. I was thinking the rock. I was thinking the table. I was thinking rock on the table because it's on the floor. Someone didn't put it on the floor. They forgot to pick up these things off the floor. So I looked three times, and then I performed the action. I created the reality of this happening in my imagination. And then I did the actual work to make that thought come true, no matter how kindergarten that is for you. <laughs> I, told them. I picked up the rock and put it on the table. I fulfilled the destiny. I created this image and, and the whole theory and the whole everything in my head. And they said, but we, don't, we still don't get it. So I did some physical work on them, punching people with very little movement, whatever, and that was fun. But, <laughs> but then I did something else. I took this woman. No, none of them knew who I, were, uh, who I was. And I took this woman. I put her in the middle of the room. She closed her eyes. I closed my eyes. I stood a few feet in front of her, and I started doing Qigong practice on her, meaning I was extending my thought to her. I don't know what she was doing. The whole room so fell silent. She started moving back and forth because everyone at the end of it told me what she was doing. I said to her, what did you feel? She goes, it felt warm. It felt like something was pulling me towards you and then pushing me away from you. I said, good. That's our thought. That is our energy that's interconnecting every single person everywhere on this planet. It's not that I made you move. It is that we became in sync on the same idea. You didn't think of anything until you felt the feeling. You felt it because of your nervous system. Our nervous system is this key. It sends out so much of what we are thinking because that's all it can do. And everything that we are receiving starts compress, um, compiling on each other. And then it creates this whole worldview of emotion, energy in our body. And then we create a narrative about that feeling. And then we create this whole concept of our world that we're going to experience. And part of that concept is our self, our self view. And part of that concept is the view of other people around us and the world itself. And that comes because we are interconnecting. And this is how we work with each other. I got the job, by the way, <laughs> teaching for a few semesters, a semester or two. And then I got fired because someone didn't like me teaching it. But the fact is I accomplished that because I thought this is what I will do with my life. I never gave up on that. Uh, 31 years later, from eight years old to now, I'm talking to you, I, I This is my plan since a kid, to be able to tell people how to actually utilize your, your thinking, how to utilize your life, how to utilize your breath, how to utilize what you want yourself to be as. Make it actually true. And you make it true because there's nothing proving it's not true. There's nothing disproving you. So you can go either way, and it's all about where you're putting this, your focus, and how much more effort you're putting into it. When I'm reading these stories from chapters one to three, and I know we can go so far into just, just the title. We can go far into the first word of the first chapter. <laughs> just, you know, that goes right into it. We can go so deep into context. And we probably don't have that much time. <laughs> but <laughs> no, we'll, we'll come back. We'll, we'll, we'll do another session. We'll dive into it a little bit more. 
because the more we dive into it, and it's not for other people, it's it's other people could enjoy it, but the more I talk about it, the more clarity I get. So it's not just necessarily for other people. A lot of people think you like yeah. to talk about these things all the No, because if I get clarity on this, then I can accomplish bigger goals. Your yeah. son goal was to put a Lego together. I'm trying to put a building together. <laughs> Your goal could be putting a, a, a whole entire city together. And then somebody else is trying to put the whole continent together. So little by little, we're getting bigger and bigger. So I, I appreciate you taking this busy time out of your schedule being with no, us. Thank you. Hopefully we can reconvene and do another session. But I want I just want to put one thing out there. Another thing from, and we spoke about this the other day, you and I, another thing from this chapter, uh, first chapter when we talk about Three Feet from Gold, was you mentioned stickability and quitability yesterday. And I really think it's so important people can hear those two terms, stickability and quitability. I mean, when I'm reading this, I, I just can't believe how similar it is to the ways I've done. I just don't have the language. And I never put my focus into making millions. I put my focus into doing this, doing developing where my, my direction wants to go or where I want my direction to go. But stickability and quitability is an amazing thing. If anyone could get this, Thinking for a Rich Book, get it, read it, and especially focus on those two words in there. I, I would love to talk about this later on when we have more time. Oh, definitely. But stickability and quitability, quitability is a habit that people have already acquired over a period of time, and it's a bad habit, but nobody likes to talk about it because there's no, there's no one thing that they do that you could point out to. If I smoke cigarette or if I drink excessively alcohol or substance or anything else, I'm doing an act that you can see and you could immediately see the effect of it, right? So you could smell the smoke on me, right? You could see that I'm drunk, all of these things. But what can you see when I'm quitting on my goals? You're not there to point it out, right? It's, right. it's something that's elusive for other people to call it out on it. Yep. So therefore, we're not talking about it. So if more coaches to talk about credibility and stickability instead of other habits, then I think other things will get fixed up or get upgraded as we go. As long as you don't quit on your goals, you're forced. You have no choice to correct and do other things the right way. So by you sticking to that, you're going to create all that. And that's how it is with every multimillionaire, anybody who's successful in all ventures of life, regardless of it being monetary or mm -hmm. non monetary they stuck to it. So, yeah. I mean, look at it. Facebook was getting crushed by MySpace. All of these different things. But look, it's taking 20, 25 years to get to where he's at. You know, a lot of people want to overnight thing. No. No. It's but development. Like, it's so progress. It's cultivation. Social media platform, you should know. You should anticipate. Yeah, if you know what he knows, then it may not take you 20 years, but it might take you 10 years. So, <laughs> right. what you want to be an overnight success is a little bit retarded. Yes. Yes, it's a process. So that means you just haven't spent enough time to study. It took this guy 20 years to write a book that's 250 pages. What's the difference Amazing. between someone becoming a bestseller author and someone not being a bestseller author? They don't get it. They're like, yep. why this, you know, 120, 200 millions have been sold? No shit, because it took 20 years. Your book took two years. There's a big difference. Yep. We're, missing 18 <laughs> years. We're missing 18 years of research. If you would have taken 20 years to write your book, I'm pretty sure that would have been a good damn ass book, right? So that's just the way. Yeah, I and I started a book in 2013. I started writing three manuscripts when I was 23, 22, 23. I'm still working on them. The book I put out in 2013, I wrote three, 400 pages. I took out 279 wow. pages. I threw it in the trash. And I wanted to focus on a different aspect of how that can go. And that's 2013. Like, we're in 2020. <laughs> I'm still not done. It's not going to be done. Maybe when I'm 55, 60, I can, you know, decide, hey, I think it's good today. <laughs> Maybe not. But, no, things, when you want to see the real benefit of something, anything that you do, you have to give it a process. Let it work itself. Oh, it Let time, it grow. Brother. You plant the seeds. You're not going to get the food the next day. So I know. Oh, anyway, let's do this. Uh, let's reconvene. Uh, we'll come back. We'll circle back and maybe in a bit, week or two, we'll come back and we'll do another session. But you you stay safe. Make sure you keep doing that stuff with your son every night. Read the book. And we maybe do. one time, maybe we can have him get, get him next to you to talk about it.
Nice. <laughs> awesome, brother. Peace. You got it. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Yep. Thank you.